Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome, welcome to another episode of Get to Know Them. Happy Valentine's Day. I hope that you are surrounded with love, love for yourself, love for the people you love, love for your animals, love for everything. Today is a day where we celebrate love, and that is why we have a special Valentine's edition today with not one, but two very special guests. Before I introduce them, I'm going to talk a little bit about our show sponsor of Get to Know Them, of course, which is the wonderful and talented Brenda Badome, based out of Toronto, Ontario, and her gorgeous clothing line. I wore this beautiful dark red top today to celebrate the day. And you can check out Brenda's website at brendabadome.com. Use the coupon code get to know them for 22% off of your order. And as always, grab yourself some coordinating jewels from my business, Glam Jewels, at glamjewels.com, G-L-A-M-J-U-L-Z.com. And we've actually got our Valentine sale on right now, and it goes until midnight tonight. So make sure to uh, pick up a couple of goodies from there. And thank you so much for joining. If this is your first time watching Get to Know Them, this is a show where every week I bring on guests to inspire you and share their stories. And uh, it's just a great hour of conversation and lots of laughs. So thank you for being here. I'm super excited to introduce our guests today. We have Monica and Jim McGuire on the show today. This couple is amazing. They have been married for over 50 years. So we've got lots of questions on that. Um, and uh, I'm really, really excited to dive into their story with you. Before I do that, I'm going to read you a short bio, just so you kind of get to know a little bit about who they are. Um, Monica and Jim met in 1952 in Chatham, New Brunswick. Their fathers were in the Air Force and the two families became good friends. Their next posting saw both families going to Ottawa, where the family friendship group became even stronger. There were five kids in Monica's family, and she was the second oldest. Jim was the oldest of four. In the late 50s, their fathers used to say how nice it would be if the two families could be united in holy matrimony. Monica and Jim thought it was funny. Well, at least Monica did. The next posting in 1960 saw Monica's family go to Boulder, Colorado, and Jim's to Dayton, Ohio. From there, Monica went to St. Bruno, Quebec, and Jim to Europe, and then back to Ottawa. When Jim was in Ottawa at Ottawa University, he would come to Montreal in the summer to work for IBM and spent many weekends with Monica and her family. He tried dating Monica's older sister, but that didn't work out too well. Then Jim turned his interest to Monica. While Monica thought he was nice, she only saw him as a family friend. How did Monica and Jim eventually end up together and live happily ever after? That's what we're here to find out today. Yay! Hello, Hello you two. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day, you guys. Thank, Thank you. you to you, you too. It's so nice to have you on the show. You know, I was going to mention before, the first question I normally ask my guests is, what did little Monica, what did little Jim want to be when they grew up? And I know we're going to keep this conversation more focused on your relationship and your marriage and the courtship, but I am curious to know what you guys both wanted to be when you grew up. Well, when I was little, I wanted to be either a school teacher or a nurse. Don't forget, in my uh, day, there weren't a whole lot of choices that women were offered, and that was huge. And then, of course, I read all the Cherry Ames uh, novels, so nursing it was. And I went wow. on to nurse for 40 years. Wow. And I wanted and how to about be you, Jim? I wanted to be a fireman, but uh, I, didn't, I didn't have the physique for it, it turns out. So I, I had to go into, uh, into the sciences and uh, had quite a career there. I was a, uh, I was a research scientist with Environment Canada. Okay. So you've both been retired. Did you retire at the same time or 
Oh, no, 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 no. No. They always tell you, do not retire at the same time. So I was okay. retired about two years. Two, years two years before Jim did. So I had my routine set up, all my playmates and everything, and then he retired. But he was told he had to find his own playmates. I, okay. I, had, the, I had the naive notion that, you know, when I one of the first things in my retirement that I would do was help Monica organize the kitchen. Yeah. So you can imagine how well that went over. That's great. But you know what I love about you guys, Jim? I often see these beautiful meals that you put on for Monica, which is so nice. And I and I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of art and creativity and talent that goes into that. The whole presentation is gorgeous. So I commend you on that. I <laughs> well, love thank it. you. So sometimes they work and other times they're just done for fun. And clearly I have no idea what I'm doing in the kitchen, but you know, after 50 years, I pick up a bit from Monica and I, you know, try to add garnishes and whatnot, which generally don't work out very well. And I, I actually had a, a stunning miscalculation with with uh, craft dinner and <gasps> and sliced hot dogs about a month ago. That actually wasn't for her, but she managed to put it on Facebook anyway. So it, so I'm embarrassed. He knows better than I did see that. craft dinner. <laughs> And this just this is a, a sort of a like, like a nostalgic thing um, from yeah. years ago when I was a, a grad student in Edmonton, uh, living alone as a bachelor. Um, I used to be able to go down to the Safeway and get a KD for seventeen cents a box. So I started talking about. I talked about that on and off over the over the decades. So she bought me a box of the stuff just to you know just to call my bluff about a month ago. And oh my God, it was awful. <laughs> It is awful stuff. I remember. Do you remember the um, the KD that wasn't the macaroni shape? It was the shells. That oh no, the shells no. Yeah, the shells. And we had a lady down the street. She used to make. We'd all the kids would go there for lunch, and she would make that with the shells. And I remember I loved it when the powder got stuck in the shell and it was so salty. <laughs> and now it's like, oh god, there's no way to eat that. No, no. Oh, uh, so. Um, I, I think a, a great jumping off point in our conversation would be from the point in the bio where um, we talk about Jim asking your older sister out on a date and that not working out too well. What I'm curious to know what happened during that date, Jim. Well, you know, I, memory is uh, <laughs> mercifully has, has blurred. I, I can't actually remember that. But uh, but I, I yeah. do remember that Monica was the uh, was the catch, and that, yeah, that became um, apparent. Uh, you know, after a few years or or whatever, and uh, and, and it kind of reminds me. You know, how, you know, talk about about sexes attracting each other. I mean, Monica was yeah. was always very attractive. I fancied myself as um, as a really terrific dresser. You know, oh. and, and and back in the day, I didn't mind mixing stripes vertically and horizontally, and 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 you know, I mean, this is what peacocks do, right? I mean, that's how you attract. Right. You, you're a flamboyant dresser. Well, it turns out, it turns out that I think her her way of operating was, I love you. You're perfect. Now change. <laughs> Ah, just as close, and just ever, as close. Yeah, ever since I just wear drab stuff, and and she's the peacock. <laughs> oh yeah, no. Yeah. You, oh, that's great. You know, as young scientists, if you ever went over to the university, you would see these guys. They had no idea how to dress. They'd get up and they knew they had to put socks, shirts, and pants on, and they didn't care what they right. were or what they looked like, and they would go in public like that. I love it. So you were, in essence, mad scientists. Like the oh, it yeah. fits the yeah. yeah pretty well, I love pretty it. well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. So I I also love in your bio how you talk about how you know the two families were so close and that the two dads mm -hmm. said, "Wouldn't it be nice if this if we all came together in holy matrimony?" Did did you both sort of grow up with that in your mind or was that just sort of a fleeting no. thing? No, or? no. That, that was a story that that my dad and Monica's dad, you know, sort of came out with in later years. But we, okay. we were quite, um, quite close as uh, as families uh, living 
in, in the mid fifties uh, to 60s. early sixties, I guess, li living in the same housing development, perhaps a quarter of a mile away. But um, but we would uh, we would have got really interesting pictures. For example, we were going up to a, a lake uh, that's we. This is in Ottawa, a very popular lake about thirty miles north of Ottawa in Quebec. Um, and the, the whole family, you know, we we're just all really, really young kids. We're all lined up in front of dad's old 57 chef station wagon. You know, we've got our, our bathing suits on and, and our flippers and this kind of thing. It's one of the earliest pictures I think we have. That's about 1957, 58 or so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I have Grace and he has a Speedo. Very sad. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Well, I love the photo that I posted of you guys from, I guess, your early courtship days. Were you already married? That, that was time? our, that was my, our going away. That was the day we were married. Oh, yeah. oh, oh that's that? great. Yeah. Yes. I love that picture. And so, so what was your first date like? Well, yeah, we had a great first date. So when Jim was at Ottawa U, I finally went into nursing at the Ottawa Civic. So this was about 67, 1967. And then he came back on the scene and he was, you know, in and around me. So we went on a date one night and we went to the movies. And the movie then was Barefoot in the Park. And it was a really wonderful, romantic, fun movie. And Jim, to me, was pretty staid. So we went parking and uh -huh. there was a park and so i said to him let's take off our shoes and socks you know girls in those days went in dresses and nylons so we went skipping through the grass in the park and i thought he did this and he was willing to be a real goof to make me happy and i thought wow there's something in there that i really like and that Amazing. was amazing so jim you took off your socks and monica you took off your pantyhose that's a big commitment with the pantyhose <laughs> on a first date. It certainly was. <laughs> well, it was back in the day, Monica. <laughs> but then, yeah. then he, in 68, he went out to Edmonton to go to U of A. And I was in Ottawa. So our whole courtship was three years long distance. And, that's back Gosh, and how did you make... That was back in the how... days when you had to pay for long distance. Yeah. It's, it's not right. the same. That was... So one of these times, uh, you know, so we'd profess undying love for each other. Well, maybe, uh, maybe a little later. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we, you know, I, I'm very practical. And so I had said yeah. to Monica, Monica, meanwhile, she's conferring with her mother every time Jim comes home, you know, for Christmas or in the summer, you know, fly back um, and Get uh, right. be with my parents. And so uh, I, I said, uh, to her one October or so, you know, I'm thinking, what can I get her for Christmas? And so I I asked her for her glove size. Uh, by the, and by, size. By, well, glove size. Well, she got together with her mother. And of course, <laughs> this could only mean one thing. Well, <laughs> well they were wrong. I'm quite surprised. Actually. I got gloves. Oh, God. So then at Easter, he oh. was coming home. And I said to my mom, if I don't get a ring this time, that's it. He's packing his bag. Well, I didn't get a ring. Same story in the summer when he came home. So the following Christmas, it was like, this is it. This is really it. And that was the yeah. year he brought the ring and the one knee. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. So in that time, from the time that you received the gloves, did yeah. you actually, Jim, did you see the disappointment on Monica's face when she opened the gloves? No, she she hid it actually <laughs> really well. She hid it? Okay. She, she doesn't hide her disappointment so well these days. <laughs> I still needed to catch them then, so I had to be really good. Yes, that's true. That's true. So uh, d did you ever drop hints, Monica, or was that sort of not done in those days? Well, I don't know if it wasn't done in those days, but it was certainly wasn't, um, you know, something that I was brought up or, you know, we didn't, you didn't do it. No. Yeah. Yeah. You were shy. Yeah. I was much shyer back then too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah okay. I, I grew out of that shyness. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. This is so great. I love, I mean, I, as you're speaking, I have so many questions, you know, just about, you know, change 
with two people, you're different people today Absolutely. than you were back then. And you've, you've grown together over all this time, which is yeah. so amazing. Yeah. Absolutely. Great. When you look back at your relationship over the years and you see how you were in your twenties and you see how you are in your seventies, there's a huge, huge, huge change. Huge mm -hmm. change in how we treat each other, um, in our expectations of each other. Um, I, I find it yeah. huge. Yeah. It's something yeah. you, you tend to grow into. Um, it, you know, oftentimes they're they're not conscious decisions to make, you know, to approach something like that, you know, life goes on and, and yeah. you learn from it, I guess. And, and we've, we've managed to be very happy during all of this. Yeah, that's wonderful. You know, one thing I wanted to ask you both about, I think, you know, when I was first married, I kind of felt this pressure where it was like, now I have a husband and we, I felt like the outside world was looking in with an expectation that we were going to do everything together. And if we didn't like exactly the th same things, it was like, oh, what's wrong with you kind of thing, you know, like whether that was made up in my mind or whatever yeah. it was. But yeah, you know, and I was used to seeing my parents doing everything together. And at sometimes my mom would be rolling her eyes like, oh, God, dad's coming along again. Like she didn't always want him there, but that's the way that they did it. And yeah. and um, my husband and I are opposite. We have our life together, but we also really love our separate interests. And I just wondered what that's been like for the two of you, because I know you have a lot, you both have a lot of interests. I think Monica, like you, <laughs> our relationship started out the same, you know, you're married and now you move as a unit. Mm -hmm. And I think once we went back to Ottawa and once we had a child that changed too, we have one son and we don't believe in that now. We're both independent people and we have different interests and we have a lot of the same interests. So I think it adds to a relationship when you both go different ways. You have something to bring back that's different. You know, if you're both doing this all the time, what have you got to 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 talk about with each other? You just experienced all the same stuff. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's so true. Yeah. Yeah. I often wonder if that is like uh, a, an expectation of like, you know, my generation and beyond, like if young people today are going through that as well, where they, well, you know, it, because it's kind of like a beautiful thing when the two of you realize, hey, I'm an individual you're an individual and like you say now we have something we have different things we can discuss and talk about it's like it keeps things interesting right? absolutely it does absolutely it does but there are still people out there today of all ages that are still very judgy and if you're not together and not doing stuff together and then there's something wrong with you or your relationship I think yeah. there are generational differences too. And I look back at my parents and Monica's parents, I think, um, you know, it was a different mold, a, a different way of operating at the time. And they, they were more um, uh, together, you know, doing the, the same sort of thing, always veering like that. Um, so you flash forward an extra 20 years to our, our generation and you see maybe a little bit more independence, some activities that one person is interested in doing that you're not necessarily, but you bring it all back to the table, let's say, and you know, when you talk about how was your day, it makes it yes. very interesting. But but it doesn't mean that it's wrong that other people like it oh, that no. way. As long as you're mm -hmm. both happy with how your relationship is, and if it works for you, then that's fine. You know, because what mm -hmm. works for you and your husband may not work for us. It doesn't mean that either one is right. They're just different. Yes, exactly. That's such an important message. It really is between the two people and what what works best for them. Yeah, yeah. So tell us about your wedding day. <laughs> How was that? And where did you get married? We, we were married in Ottawa okay. and left that day for Edmonton because I lived. And um, 
So our wedding day, it rained. And they always say, you know, if it rains on the bride, then it's going to be a good long marriage. So, so I don't like, never did like being the center, you know, with people looking at me. I, I hate that. So I really didn't care if we had a wedding or we didn't have a wedding. I just wanted to be married. So we had an afternoon cocktail reception, which meant I didn't have to sit at a head table. So it was very nice. It was held at the officer's mess on an Air Force base and all our friends and family were there. And of course, our, our, our parents' friends are all the same friends because they're all the Air Force friends. So everybody was there. And it was just a really fun day, you know, a nice little trio played. We had everything that you would have at a wedding, but as a cocktail reception. And then Jim and I left and flew to Edmonton. We were met by a friend. And in, yeah. in flying to Edmonton, my, my, our parents took us out to the airport, the Ottawa airport. And I guess my father must have said something you know, back in the day. Of course, it was way more informal. So we got the very last seats uh, in this DC-9 headed to Toronto. Um, but they, they brought us uh, a bottle of champagne. Yeah. Um, and, and it was really nice. It was mum's, GH mum uh, champagne, you know, back in the day. Wow. Uh, yeah. And, and the, 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 um, the server winked at us and, and said, it's okay. You don't have to put this away. You can just, you know, drink as we take off. And we, we had been sprinkled with confetti. So it was pretty obvious what was going on. And we got to Toronto and it was the same sort of thing. We were yeah. treated royally, you know, getting on the Air Canada flight out of Toronto to Edmonton too. They saw the... Uh, they, they they saw the confetti and I said, oh, you know, this this calls for more champagne, you know, so that was a lot of fun. And and it's yeah. a good thing I enjoyed that because by the time we got to the his apartment, I had left, I had bought a set of new sheets to leave with friends. And I said to her, don't give them to him till just before he's coming home, because I want to know that we're at least having a nice clean bed that night. So we got to the yeah. apartment and there sat the sheets in the package on top of the bed. Right away, I had to go to work. <laughs> and I oh, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Wow. But I, can, I tell you about, can I tell you about oh, yeah. my, my wedding cake topper? Because this of is... Of course, I was going to say, there's a prop there that needs to okay. be uh, talked about. So yes. Take a look. So, Whoops, where is she? Oh. See her face? Look. Yes. <laughs> See how ugly it is? There, she has a crack. He's, his head fell off on her 50th. Yes. His head is here. It doesn't feel oh, well for Jim. How do you feel break. about that, Jim? It, it, you know, the fact that it's decapitated really is not a comment on the marriage. I'm just saying. <laughs> so this bride and groom were on my parents' wedding cake in 1947. And it had always been at home. And I said to my mom, you know, I'm more sentimental now than I was then. I said, I would really like that on my cake. So she was really excited and she pulled it out, unfortunately, the night before the wedding. And it was in really sad shape. So my mother, my grandmother, who was up from Nova Scotia, my mom's really dear friend who was in from St. Bruno, got together in the kitchen with some paint. They had red, white and black. That was it. And they decided to fix the bride and groom. This was all done, by the way, with rum and coke in hand. Oh. <laughs> so this is why the poor bride has a slash where her mouth should be. The groom has a dirty chin. I think it might have been a beard. He's got a hole here where it was a cane. She's cracked here. So the next day it's on the cake and my mom's friend, who's still holding her head, said, why have you got that on your cake? And I said, well, because you people work so hard at it, I didn't want to disappoint anybody. And she looked at me and she said, you should have thrown it in the garbage. It's got a lot more hair, I think, than I had. Oh, well. Yeah. No, you had a lot of hair then. <laughs> right well, now, Jim has twice the wife and half the hair. I'm pretty well. <laughs> You guys are so funny. Oh, that's a great story. And, you know, that just speaks volumes to forget about perfection. Like, these are the things now you're cherishing that. It brings back all these great memories. The imperfections is what, you know, that's what makes life so sweet. Yeah. 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 It didn't affect your marriage. So, how important could it have been? 
And it's a good exactly. story 50 years later. It sure is. I love that story. How about a honeymoon? Did you have a honeymoon or? Yes, yeah. um, we did. Uh, we rented a car and we drove from Edmonton to Banff and then to Lake Louise. So we stayed at the Banff Springs and then we stayed at Shadow Lake Louise, which by the way, is a place for newlyweds and nearly deads. So we went back 30 years later to complete 40, the loop, 40, 40, years, 40 later. years later to complete the loop. <laughs> we had the picture taken at Shadow Lake Louise in the same spot we had 40 years earlier. Great. Oh, yeah. that's so fun. We were in, they had a ballroom at Shadow Lake Louise and, and they yeah. played ballroom yeah, dancing, dancing music. music. Yeah, yeah. And there was a couple, yeah. like I think it was Fred and Ginger, frankly. They just kept circling the whole hall. And Jim and I had our little corner and we just stayed in it, you know, doing this. Doing the box step. One, <laughs> two, back. And one. those people passed us 42 times during the song. Oh, had, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did the two of you have a song that's special? Yes, we did. Um, it you... was very popular at the time. Um, uh, Simon and Garfunkel, Bridge Over Troubled Water. And we oh. thought that this, uh, th this actually meant quite a bit to, to both of us. I don't know if it's like bridging two solitudes um, or whatever, but it, it held a lot of meaning for us. Oh, that's beautiful. Great song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I did want to talk to you about one of my favorite topics is arguing. I know you guys have probably never had an argument never, in your life. Never. Nope. But if you can recall. <laughs> we'll make it up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, if you can make it up. Um, I'm curious to know when you're having a disagreement or an argument, how is it different today than it was perhaps when you were first together? I, I find it's good that I'm getting a hard of hearing. I just... <laughs> When when we were first married, I am a very volatile person. So I go up fast, but I come down fast. So if I was angry, I would go meow, 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 like this. And he would stand there in Edmonton and he'd look at me and he'd say, and he started to walk out of the room. I said, what are you doing? He said, when you want to speak to me more civilly, I will come back. Well, it's really hard to have a fight when the other person leaves the room on you. Over yeah. the years, he has forgotten that part about leaving the room, and he stays now. So we're we're very um, we're both very vocal when we have a fight. There's there's yelling, but you know what? I don't think that it's a bad thing because it all gets out there, and then it's done and it's gone. Unless I want to pout for a couple of days just to you know give him the cold shoulder. But but aside from that, so people who say they never fight in a relationship, man. I don't get but, that. But we try to avoid yeah. you know, being demeaning, shall oh, yeah, we no, say. No. I mean, you can you can argue yeah. at uh, at full volume over certain things. It's almost like a dispassionate uh, argument in that regard. It's not a, a real personal thing. No. Yes, that's right. Yeah, t like taking, just looking at the problem and, and, you know, fueling it with the passion and everything, but not, um, being demeaning to your partner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We have a great deal of respect for each other. I have to say, I think that's yeah. one of the things that um, for me is strong in a marriage is mm -hmm. respect. Yeah. yeah. Yes. What do you guys think about the uh, don't go to bed angry thing? Oh, no, we've gone to bed angry a lot of times. <laughs> no, but, but it, yeah. it really is probably a good idea if only, you know, that it, it speaks to the necessity to resolve things sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we, but we did it over the years. Yeah. We, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. human nature being what it is, it's very difficult to let things go right away. Mm -hmm. Is it a good yes. idea? For sure it is. Yeah. And especially as you get older, because who knows? <laughs> Yeah, that, I, I feel like that's been a lesson that I've learned is um, this whole thing about never go to bed angry. You hear all these messages and then and then I found that I was trying to resolve something quickly that wasn't ready to be resolved. Yeah. Like I wasn't ready to resolve it, but then I was becoming like the people pleaser to get this thing like, let's just get back to, you know, whatever. But sometimes the, my husband's taught me that the, the space to think 
and just sort of process is a real gift. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's very yeah. true because, and, and when I say, you know, like I could, I could give Jim the cold shoulder for a day or two during that time, you're also thinking a lot about what was said, who said it, how it was said, did it need to be said? And, and sometimes you look at yourself and say, oh my goodness, like what's wrong with you? Why did you do that or say that? So, yeah, I, I think your husband's very right. I don't think it hurts to to take time to to get over whatever it was that you were arguing about. Yeah, and yeah. you don't have to sacrifice your principles just for a speedy no. resolution. No. That's right. Yeah, yeah, And you exactly. can't agree to disagree. There are things that we still, we will never agree on. Never. Mm. Stripes and solids. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, the stripes and solids. Um, do you, what was your last argument about? Do you remember? Oh, no, but our arguments these remember. days are more petty than anything. Like they're they're stupid, so yeah. they're not even worth nothing fundamental. They're everyday things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, oh, you didn't put this away properly, or you know, whatever. Oh, that's it. I remember now. <laughs> Well, we we've just had a, a a little kitchen renovation, and I'm not I'm, I'm putting stuff away in the wrong place. I mean, is this trivial or what? Yes. Yeah, yeah, but it happens. It's good. It's it's normal. Yeah. We don't have arguments no. over major things no. anymore. That's we're we're too old and too tired to get into all that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And you have wisdom now to yeah. to move through those things with you. Oh, we'd like to think so, Monica. Yeah. Of yeah. course. I can feel it. It's vibing off the screen here. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think is the the key to a happy partnership? Well, I mean, we have fundamental love for and devotion to and respect for uh, each other, you know, which goes a long way. And you 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 realize that uh, you have to be supportive. It's like, you know, the old cliche, you know, we're, uh, you're, we're in this together, shall we say. But it, it, um, it, it holds a lot of truth, I think. Yeah, I think respect for me is very important. Um, communication is important and a sense of humor. We have a lot of fun. We, he has a bizarre sense of humor and I can be really annoyed with him and he'll just stand there and do something and crack me up, which is annoying in itself because how can you be angry now if you're laughing at him? So I think yeah. those sorts of things are very important. And it's taken her 50 years, but she is finally showing quite a good sense of humor. <laughs> She surprises me every now and then. <laughs> That's great. That was going to be my next question, Jim. Very good segue. So is I'd love to know, is there anything that surprises you about Monica? Well, you just said her humor, but yeah, well, even today in Monica with Jim, is there anything that's like, wow, you know, this is surprising? I think when I, I, I look back and, I, you know, I mean, they, uh, and that was not a joke, you know, about the, about the sense yeah. of humor, but I, I look back and see how Monica had treated certain situations. You know, they may not necessarily have had uh, you know, or their basis in conflict, but how she did that sort of thing. Uh, once you step back and think about that sort of thing, I think I find I have a um, a newer appreciation for some aspects of her personality, or you know, something that I hadn't really given a great deal of thought to before. Yeah, this is where you kiss me. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I let my side down here. Oh, as, as surprising me. I don't know that anything is a total surprise anymore. Jim is very kind and very thoughtful. Um, the biggest things that I like, it's like Valentine's Day, do not give me flowers or candy. Man, I can't stand getting this stuff on Valentine's Day. When he's at the hardware store and then he comes home and he's got flowers and says, I was thinking about you. That's yeah. So he still does that. 
I like that. And that reminds me of a story, <laughs> speaking of flowers, and, and it has to do because uh, uh, good friends, we were joshing about this on Facebook earlier. We had uh, in, in the photo club to which I belong, a wonderful lecture a couple of years ago by a, um, a, a woman who was a really big photographer in the States. And it was on the subject of what's called Wabi Sabi, W-A-B-I hyphen S-A-B-I, which is a, a Japanese aesthetic or art form that takes pleasure in looking at decay uh, and the way she had a decay or death and, and the way she showed this to us with it was flower arrangements, dead flowers in essence. And so I was so enthralled with this wonderful, wonderful lecture that for the next uh, two, three months, every Saturday morning, I'd go out and buy flowers for Monica. And of course, Monica was ecstatic that I was buying flowers, kind of wondering why yeah. is buying flowers all the time. But I had ulterior yeah. flowers because I wanted to photograph them once they died. Yeah, interesting. And and did you see a beauty in those flowers that you hadn't I, ever noticed before, Jim? I do. This? Well, one of our favorite yeah. um, uh, groups of flowers, shall we say, is uh, is tulips. And it just happens the way in our living room, the, the way the light hits the coffee table. If we have a, um, a, a display of tulips uh, that are maybe really past their prime, you know, a week, week and a half old, and they're all drooping over like this, I think they're, they're quite beautiful. It reminds me of Impressionist art. So yes. Uh, so it's nice. It's inspirational. We love it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so great. I love that. See, and we're at the Wabi Sabi stage of our life. <laughs> we're deteriorating. I didn't want to go that far. And okay. we like it. Okay. Okay. When the replay is made, I didn't bring that up. That's so great. Oh, my gosh. So how do you keep the romance going? Do you guys still do, like, do you do yeah. date nights and things like yeah. that? How do you spend time, just the two of you? Yeah. During COVID, we had a grand time and you had to get dressed up and I would decorate the table for Mardi Gras or all these things. Then we bought a book called 160 Unusual Things to See in Ontario. So we have date day road trips and we pick a page, Jim lines it all up and away we go on our road trip and we, we just look for unusual things to see. We did during COVID, we did a tour, a European tour of all the capitals. So, you know, we did Paris and London and we went and we found them all in Ontario and it helps you see your area. There's yeah. about there's about eight different little towns or, and big cities uh, named yeah. after European yeah. capitals. So that was fun. So yeah. those are our special kind of date days that we like. But we cook for each other and, you know, make it special and yeah. Yeah, that's wonderful. I love hearing that. I think so many couples had a great time over COVID. Oh, yeah. you know, unfortunately some did not, but um, it, it was such a nice time to actually be playful and curious again, like yes. when we yes. were kids, you know. And yeah. you had to rely on each other because you weren't out and about with anybody. So you were, it was only the two of you. Yeah. So, you know, there were card nights and game nights and yeah. Great. Oh, love it. Not Netflix every night. Oh. Well, Jim watches very little TV actually. So yeah. How about you, Monica? Are you, do you enjoy Netflix and all that kind of stuff? Or uh, I don't watch Netflix as much because there, there are a lot of series, you know, and it goes on and yeah. on and on. And then it ends. And then three years later, it comes back. And I can't remember what they were about anyway. But yes, yeah, I'm a, I'm a TV watcher. And while I watch TV, I either knit or I do crossword puzzles. I'm an avid cross, not crossword puzzles, jigsaw puzzles, oh, because I can't just sit there and watch TV. So I have to do something with my hands. She can yeah. do a thousand piece crossword puzzle just like that. Uh, oh, that's great. I love it. <laughs> what do you guys think about um, young people today and how they get together? Like either through online dating or, you know, it, it seems to be harder and harder for it. Like even in my generation, we had like, dances to go to we had it's to me it seems sort of sad in a way that and there it makes, aren't as it makes you wonder what well uh, you know it's 
as time goes on, the generations approach these sort of things differently. I'm, I'm sure yeah. my parents thought we were going to hell in a handbasket for some of the things that we were doing. And we would say the same thing about uh, about our son when he was much younger. And now we look at great nieces and, um, uh, well, primarily great nieces dressing up uh, kind of provocatively for Instagram pictures <laughs> and that old. sort of thing. <laughs> yes. Odd, you know. I don't have a problem, Monica, with online dating. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's very difficult for young people today to meet people because there are, aside from being picked up in a bar, I mean, how mm -hmm. else are you going to meet them? You know, I mean, some people are lucky, meet them, you know, playing golf or bowling leagues or, you know, whatever. But yeah. um, but I don't have a problem. I think we've known a number of two or three people who have met online and have had very successful relationships. Yeah. So I yeah. think it's whatever works for you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right. You got to roll with the. Absolutely. What's the happening. Time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Roll yeah. with the times. That's right. Um, so I have, I've got all these questions here. I have okay. to, I have to look. Um, so what I wanted to ask you both as the final question, unless you have anything else that you would like to bring to light here, because <laughs> this is just so cool. I wanted to ask you, Jim, what is your favorite thing about Monica? And Monica, what is your favorite thing about Jim? I know we kind of, we covered a lot of things you love about each other, but if I think with Monica, it's she's almost always up. She's bouncy. She's vibrant. Uh, she's really uh, enthusiastic, a happy sort of person. I I tend to be a bit more uh, of a curmudgeon. But th this is amazing. You see, I mean, you could just see the difference uh, in something so trivial as how she makes the um, answer, or the answering uh, call, or whatever, on our answering machine. You know, I, Aww. you know, if I were asked, I would say what, but not, not her. You know, I mean, she's, you, it's just like Mary Poppins. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Okay, it might be that might be a little bit exaggerated, but but yeah. I am more positive than him. About Jim, I love his sense of humor. He makes me laugh all the time. I I really, really, I, I just love that. And I love um, mostly how he treats me. I, I like that um, he's very, always very thoughtful about what I might need. He's very much a gentleman still, you know, for doors and don't carry that. It's too heavy for you, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, all of those, but his sense of humor. I love his sense of humor. Oh, great. I love that. The sense of humor always gets the girl, I have to say. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. yeah. It's so important. I think Laughing so. every day is the best. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. That, that's well put. Yeah, yeah, it really is. I'm so grateful to both of you. And Jim, I wanted to say, you know what I love? You know how you kind of notice things when you're, I've, I've known Monica, but I haven't known you as well. And one of the things that struck me without even talking to you was when I asked Monica to do the interview. And then I said, and could, do you think you could do it with Jim? And she said, absolutely. And that just sort of showed, you know, how much you are there for her because it would have been fine if she had said, well, let me just go over it with Jim. But just the absolutely was like, wow, this guy's great. You know, he he's up for anything as long as it's yes, well, he is. loving Monica. Thank you, Monica. But I mean, what else are you going to do on Valentine's Day, for goodness sake? Yeah. <laughs> but you're right. I wouldn't have missed this. Oh, that's great. I'm so happy. Thank you both so much. Thank well, you. Thank you for having us. You were a great interviewer. Yeah. Oh, thanks. That's so great. I'm going to put you back with the virtual champagne and uh, I'll say goodbye to the folks and then I'll come back to you in just a sec. All right. All right. Bye now. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. What a wonderful love story. I'm always into love stories. Doesn't even have to be Valentine's Day. This was so great. Big thank you to Monica and Jim 
for sharing their story with us today. And as always, make sure you check out our show sponsors, brendabadome.com. Use the coupon code, get to know them for 22% off of your order. Check out our Valentine sale, get yourself some coordinating jewels. And uh, I will see you back here next week with another amazing guest. Keep on showing the world your sparkle. And thank you so much for tuning in today. Bye for now.